I'll just reverse heckle the people who come in after this. That's always funny. So this is, as ever, the state of the Velociraptor. Uh, I don't know if people, if people particularly remember um, why it got called this, so I'm, I'm, ju I'm just going to um, mention that now because it's been a few years since I did. Um, basically, I am selectively misquoting Larry Wall. Um, because some, some years ago, he made a comment that Pearl 5 is a Velociraptor, and what we need now is an Acceleraptor. And as, as well as being an absolutely terrible pun, I thought it was really apt in the idea of, you know, Velociraptors are small, fast, vicious predators that hunt in packs, rather like sea pen dependencies. And it also makes a good comparison, because unlike an Acceleraptor, the Velociraptor actually exists. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so the, 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 do, I've got to say, telling that story is much funnier when Larry swears at me halfway through. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is actually State of the Velociraptor 5. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused about this. I, ex I expected people to get, bored, to get bored of it and kind of kick me out of doing it long before this. Um, but yeah, um, SOTV won back in 2010. That was, that was a weird year because we, we, we just had Pearl 512 released, right? And at, at the time, getting an actual release of Pearl 5 was this kind of amazing thing. Um, and I, I was like, look, look, look. You know, I mean, because for, 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 for however many years, you know, we, we've been thinking that any language called Pearl was doomed to never have a release, right? Um, suddenly, Pearl 512 came out, and now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm standing here, five state of the Velociraptors, five major releases of Pearl. We've, we've got to the point where we, we, we almost forget how amazing this is compared to the friggin' wasteland of rubbish and everything still being 5.8 that we had beforehand. Okay, some of the people on Red Hat Enter for a Prize Linux is still on 5.8, but, you know, these people have more problems than that these days, and also most of them have discovered Pearl Brew by now. Uh, anyway, um, so 5.12 was shepherded by Jesse Vincent. Um, fair chunk of 5.14 as well. And then now IJBS has taken over. It, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. Those two, I mean, they, 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 are, they are two of the nicest people I have, um, I, was going to say ever, I was going to say ever met. I have met nicer people than that, but they all ran screaming from my personality. Um, whereas, you know, J Jesse and IJBS aren't just nice people. They're nice people who can put up with the rest of the Pearl Five Porters, which, believe me, is, is, it, it's a learned skill. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, and also there have been lots and lots of bleed release managers. Um, people shipping the, un the unstable development releases once a month. And you know, part of the reason for this is, one, spread around the load, and two, shake out problems in the release process. As in things that are insufficiently automated and are reasonable or are too easy to screw up. Um, and, you know, um, lo, lo, lo and behold, I, I did one back in the 513 days and predictably did screw it up slightly, but it, it basically worked, um, which was the point at which RGS, who was pumpkin for a lot of 5.10, was kind enough to comment on Twitter that releasing Pearl is now so easy a blonde can do it. <laughs> Asshole. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I made a couple of mistakes in terms of the um, contributing files and things. So um, I, I, I have a piece of advice that I intend to release uh, to, to, to the world. Don't do a release of Pearl in the middle of a Yahtzee. Or at least not again. They, they swapped me. It was supposed to be a different month. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> So, uh, no, RJBS has done so much good stuff. Um, you know, he, he's, 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 he's endured flame wars, he's herded people, he's dealt with private hate mail. 
um, from people who are totally upset because the features that he's adding aren't exactly what the person wanted. It's like, well, send your own patch then, right? But um, no, he's, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you know, getting Pearl 5 porters moving in mostly the same direction is, is a serious feat of diplomacy. Um, I, 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 think if, I think if you'd stuck me in that position, I'd just have murdered half of them, and then the other half would probably have done what they were told. Um, RJBS's approach is on the whole better. Uh, <laughs> um, although not quite as funny to watch. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's the whole thing of steady forward progress. I mean, we... <laughs> There, 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 was, there was quite a while when Pearl 5 was seriously stagnating, and at this point, we, we are moving forward so much faster than we thought than we, than we used to be. And I think it's important that we remember that. You know, we, we, sh we should not get used to this and go, well, yes, this is normal. We should go, yes, this keeps happening, but it's awesome every time it happens. And remember that, because, you know, um, you know, per per periodically, the pearl community as a whole wastes like two or three weeks being depressed about the state of, about the state of the world. And you know what? Yapsies are getting slowly bigger. The number of CPAN authors and uploads goes up every year. Pearl Five is getting a new major release every year. Um, and the you know the the pearl six guys have a plan. It's a new plan, and they assure us that this one is absolutely, definitely going to work sometime real soon now. <laughs> um, and, you know, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but in the meantime, they're doing an awesome job of coming up with things for us to steal. <laughs> I, seriously. Who, who, if Pearl 6 manages to release, great. If Pearl 6 doesn't manage to release, We'll keep stealing all the best bits. This is a win either way, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, new, a lot of the features that, that have been added, they're little things, but they're little things that make a big difference. Like being able to declare a package as a block, rather than a package being basically a magic, package being a magic statement that twiddles a file level global deep in the bowels of the compiler. Um, I have gazed into that particular abyss. I would recommend that you set aside at least a litre of your favourite spirit in order to forget afterwards if you have a look. Um, S slash slash R. I mean, seriously. It's a tiny thing. But it makes, it makes scripting level stuff so much nicer. You know, try, trying to explain to a sysadmin who's just coming over from shell scripting, oh well, you need to do open paren my dollar foo equals dollar bar equals tilde, no. So much of an improvement. Um, you can now do keys and values directly on references. Um, and we have the use v5.xx switch, which basically says, hey, turn on the default feature set for this version of Perl. And happily, that not only turns on the default feature set these days, it turns on strict. This is good. This means you can sneak use strict into everybody's code without them realizing they're doing it. Um, so, and, and also, oh, friggin' thing, sorry. Um, lexical subroutines. Has anybody even noticed this? You, 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 <laughs> it's so cool. Be, being, being able, you know, being able to have a, to have a named lexically scoped subroutine, you know, it, it, mean, it means if, if, you're, if people are coming from Python, of course, they're scared of lambdas because, you know, Python, lambdas, no. So you, you, you can do that, you can do that instead, and that's really handy. Um, and this year we got signatures! <laughs> and while it is currently marked as experimental, the expectation is it's experimental in terms of the implementation, but the user-level API, I believe, is fully expected to remain backwards compatible, at which point you can start using it, and all that will happen is in a year or two, you'll be able to change from use experimental signatures to use feature signatures, and then a year after that, use v5 point whatever, I can't count that high. Uh, <laughs> Um, we'll just turn it on by default, and the world will be a wonderful place. Except possibly for me, given I 
abuse the prototype in WebSimple, but that's fine. I'll just rewrite that code. <laughs> I would much rather have signatures than complain about that, you know? Um, and then that also, if you're, in, if you're interested in playing around with a slightly different version, there's been a signatures.pm on CPAN for years. Um, it's just for some reason nobody actually seems to use it very often. Um, anyway, postfix DREF. Um, that, that's a tiny thing, and pe people tend not to notice it. But the thing is, right, then you get key value slices, and it, it starts making a noticeable difference. Because, um, okay, take this. Oh, wonderful. Right. Excuse me. Ah, now it fits on screen. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, a piece of code like this, fairly simple, bit of dereferencing and doing a bit of work. That's the equivalent old school code. Um, that will run on 5.8. Presumably it would run on 5.6, but I really do not care. Caring about 5.6 is Reba Sushi's problem. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, in, in, in my case, I occasionally maintain code that Ingi wrote. Um, Anyway, um, but the, the thing is, okay, you look at this, that's reasonably normal Perl, right? You combine all of the different extra features we've got since together, and it reduces down to that. Defined or gets rid of the um, unless defined, uh, and then postfix deref with a key value slice, you can just pull the pairs straight out of the hash ref. How cool is that? I mean, yeah, it's, it, it, it's one of those things, people go, oh, no really big features have been added. I'm like, no but lots of small features have been added, and when you put them all together, it really does add up to something that, that's significantly more different than you think. Um, sadly, I, I don't tend to get to play with most of these because I do still support 5.8 for the poor bastard still stuck on, on all versions of Red Hat. Um, but, you know, occasion, occasionally some of Shadowcat's customers have a pull from this century so I can get to play with it in their code bases. Um, at some point, I'm just going to lose my temper um, and write a complete build and complete build and installation system that doesn't annoy me, um, and start supplying an installer for all of my code that just builds a recent Perl, um, and then Reba Sushi will try and make it run on 5.6, and I'll cry. But anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, roll on 5.22, and, and remember. Remember that there was a time when this, when this was not normal. Remember that and rejoice, you know? Um, so, yeah, so, latest Perl. Because, you know, people have noticed that system pearls are often a little bit on the ancient side. Um, well, okay, there's Perl Brew. Perl Brew was the first thing to do that. It, absolutely fantastic for building out half a dozen pearls to do smoke testing of CPAN stuff against. A um, bunch of people have used it successfully for production deployments, although I, I remain unconvinced that it's the perfect option because it wasn't really designed for that. Um, but so, that's okay. If Pearl Brew doesn't, and you don't get along, uh, there's PLM. Um, PLM actually contains basically an extracted version of the um, Perl Brew build code, which is released on CPAN as Perl hyphen build with a module of Perl colon colon build. So, you know, um, you, can, you, 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 can, you can get as much of the guts of Perl Brew as you want on a sliding scale depending on how much magic you like. Um, so, yeah. Um, and the, the thing that really makes me happy is it's no, long, it's no longer considered a weird thing to do to build your own Perl. I mean, like five or six years ago, I had a make file that basically built a couple of dozen Perls for testing, and people looked at me like I'd grown a third head. And they looked at me like I'd grown a third head for the Perl part, not for the make file part as well. Uh, and it's, it, the things that are starting to seem normal to us, that's, that's, that's a really important thing. Uh, anyway, um, system pearl? Nah, stuff up. Um, and then, you know, getting CPAM modules. Uh, CPAM minus and local lib has long been a tradition. 
Um, you now have Carton, which is a nice way of building a local lib. You have Pinto, which is maximum overkill for building a customized mini CPAN. Um, and if you want to get even cloudier, you can do Pinto and Stratapan if you want to. Um, so, it, you know, where would, oh, and the other thing is, Debbie and Pearl have been doing a huge amount of updating of modules. I mean a huge amount. I, I've, I've been sat in there watching stuff go past because if they can't find a suitable upstream contact, I go and find one and drag them in for them. Um, and they, they're basically packing, if all, all you really need to do is say to them, please could I have this module, this is why it's useful, and it'll turn up in unstable the next week. And everything they package for unstable, they're pushing down towards um, stable for the uh, next Debian release. So, you know, um, app gets actually not going to suck for ooh, at least three or four months in a row. Um, so, yeah, I had to pick your poison. Um, uh, web stuff. Okay, yeah. It's now, it's now the grumpy old man on the hill, but Catalyst is still being actively developed. Um, Yes, it's full of cruft, but that's because there are five or six year old code bases that get upgraded across major releases without breaking. So um, we apologize for the, for the mess that results from this, but we kind of like not breaking people's production applications. Um, <laughs> Dancer 2 is gradually maturing. Um, there, there's, there's, there's still a long road before before people are happy with the architecture of the internals, but it's getting, it's getting slowly better, it's getting there. Um, and in the meantime, Dancer 1 still works perfectly well, and Dancer 2 is fine, provided you're willing to deal with the occasional sharp edge um, that Sawyer hasn't sanded off yet. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm so glad that, that Sawyer's taken the lead on Dancer 2, because, you know, Believe me, be, being, the lead, being the lead developer on a web framework really does require that sort of ability to swear. Uh, <laughs> and Mojalicious keeps kicking ass as well. Um, they're coming up with some really cool things. Um, and, you know, I, I, I absolutely, if you're, if you're thinking about stuff, I, I would seriously recommend looking over the tools they've got. Because it's not, so much, it's not so much zero dependency for the sake of having no dependencies. It's zero dependency because the, by the time Sebastian Riedel had finished getting annoyed with the existing wheels and inventing what he was convinced were better ones, he didn't have any dependencies left. Um, and you know what? There are definitely cases in which he's a rounder. So, you know, all, all, all props to Mojalicious. Um, my, my, my only complaint is that it kicks slightly different ass every major release. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if you, if you want to be out on the bleeding edge and move that fast, you've got to do that. It's, it, welcome to programming. It's all trade-offs, right? Anyway, um, async as well. Um, Leonard's IO async is mature, solid, same to work with, and is now largely working with futures, um, which are a great way to avoid breaking your brain on callbacks. Um, Stephen has an implementation of Promises um, that runs happily on top of Mojo, EV, or any event. So, you know, you can get all of the any event ecosystem um, and as little as possible of Mark Lehman's cock. Um, okay, if, if, you look at the, if you look at the any event internals, dick waving does not even come close. But... That's a different story. Uh, Mojo IO loop is worth looking at for async stuff as well. That runs standalone. Um, and the stuff they're doing with delays is actually quite cute. Um, so, I mean, again, we, we had, there's more than one good way to do it. This is just, it's just awesome, you know. Um, we, 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 can do a, we can do async without breaking our brains. Um, over in Oakland, Moose is still moving forwards. Moo is about to hit 2.0, and herein I digress to explain the colossal mistake that I made early on. How far through this deck am I? Yeah, I'm going to end up skipping a chunk of this. That's fine. Um, so, Moo was originally Moose for CLI, right? My idea of it was I wanted something 
that I could use to write fast starting command line apps and maybe even the occasional CGI script in a situation where I didn't want to do a proper deployment. Um, it was also originally expected to be, because of the low levels of dependencies, some, basically a gateway drug towards people using Moose. Um, but what also seems to have happened is people have ended up using it kind of as Moose for CPAN, which basically in, in the sense of if you release a CPAN module using Moose, there will be a certain percentage of people who refuse to use it on principle because Moose. Whereas there's very few people who refuse to use things using Moo on principle because Moo has a small enough dependency chain that it doesn't, it doesn't scare people quite so much. Which, you know, if you're stuck on old versions of Red Hat, not scaring people may be essential. Um, but seriously, I, I, I didn't expect that to happen. Um, so the strictures defaults are basically something I designed with a view to maximum safety for newbies. Because, you know, newbies use the de always use the defaults. Um, and I want, I want to see them, you know, get as much help as possible from the Perl compiler to tell them when they've screwed up. Because gods know I, can, I need as much help as I can get. Um, but they're not the right thing anymore because we've got a lot of people coming moose to moo rather than going in the other direction. So um, as of moo 2.0, um, we're going to switch back to just doing strict and warnings to be exactly the same as moose. And my cunning plan to maintain the safety for newbies is to have in the synopsis, use strictures, use Moo, and hope and hope and hope that the newbies will copy and paste from the documentation. Because for once, that will be a feature from my point of view. Um, at which point, the newbies should still get maximum safety, um, but everybody else gets a least surprise when going across. Also, the people who are scared of fatal warnings won't keep whining at me. Cough, Stephen Little, cough. Uh, um, I, honestly, I, 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 sh I should probably have done this a while ago, um, but my, my, my user base kind of changed underneath me and I didn't notice for a while. So, yeah, sorry. Anyway, um, all of which goes to show, you know, I am not an OO system designer, um, which is why the only OO system I've ever built was a half-baked, cut-down copy of Moose. Fortunately, Stephen is, um, and he's redesigning P5 Mop again. This time, um, going for a much more um, basically smaller target and trying to build build it out of Perl internals the way the rest of the Perl internals are built. Um, and so, you know, um, hopefully this one will be the production model. I, I can absolutely see, the, see this one actually working, um, which would be really cool. Um, and if he gets decent ex excess accessors, I am absolutely going to steal them for Moo. Um, so, you know, um, ask me next year. Or, you know, ask Stephen if he bothers to turn up. Seriously, the guy cried off turning up to the CNA because he'd moved to Amsterdam to work for booking, and then he doesn't turn up to this one either. Wuss. <laughs> really. I think it's called Demis, you should know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, had, I, 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 I think I have a slide that says that at some point. But yeah, um, something I, I do want to remind people of, though. Um, so a decade of dubious decisions, because that's about how long I've had a pause account. Uh, how did I get a pause account? Some Traeger had a module called guile.pm that basically bound Lisp into Perl um, in interesting ways. And so I, I tried to install it and discovered that there was a bug in the build system such that it, didn't actually, it wouldn't actually make unless it was already installed. Because he hadn't noticed on his development machine. <laughs> um, so I, 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 sent, I sent him a patch for that and basically went, is there any chance you could release this? Because there's, there's some stuff I'm doing with it. And it would be really nice if my code actually, if my code's dependency is actually installed. Um, and he went, well, you know, I'm, I'm not really that interested in that module anymore. So um, 
No, but you know, if you sign up for a pause account, I'll give you co-main. <laughs> so yeah, my, 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 my introduction into the Pearl community was somebody else saying, well, volunteered to me. <laughs> oh, how the times have changed. Um, but th th there's an important lesson in that, um, which is some, something to always remember when you're going, I've got an idea, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm good enough to do it. Okay? The, the, the things that really matter, honestly, they're not done by the best person for the job. They're, not, they're usually not even done by the most knowledgeable person about the problem. Fundamentally, the important stuff ends up getting done by whoever turns up. So, you know, if you, if you end up wondering whether you're good enough to do something, remind yourself that turning up already makes you special and give it a go anyway. Some people are better at turning up than others. <laughs> anyway, um, so the, the, the um, other thing I want to say is um, one of the places that you might turn up in order to do stuff, and I, I seriously recommend doing this because it's a huge amount of fun, is um, irc.pull.org. And we've done, a, we've done a big chunk of um, sort of reorganization of how the network's run this year. Um, so we, we, now, we now have a statement of conduct, which is basically a written list of all the things that we would have kicked you off the network for before anyway. But now, now, it, now it's written down. It's always nice to document the standard, right? Um, and people go to the statement of conduct. Well, yeah, no, we're not calling it a code of conduct. Number one, there's all sorts of stupid politics around, the, around that particular term. And two... Who the hell thought that acronym was a good idea? I mean, maybe for anybody who was in my talk earlier, maybe it was a French person who came up with it. Uh, um, so, but basically, this is a declaration of civilization. Um, you know, I mean, we are now in an era where you can actually have a conversation about Pearl in hash Pearl on irc.pearl.org. Um, anybody who knows its reputation of old may be a little bit surprised about that. Um, we, I, 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 still, I still recall with great happiness um, the day where um, Chris Nandor, Pudge, um, turned, back, turned back up after a long hiatus, tried to be Pudge, rapidly got banned, threw a tantrum about me on news.pearl.org, and banned me from the site permanently, which I thought was hilarious because I posted once ever. Um, and then the use.pearl.org thread basically went, everybody going, no, no, we're being more civilized now. You're going to have to deal with it. This is the only time I have ever seen the resident arseholes of the Pearl community and Andy Lester on the same side of an argument. Um, that, was, that, that was a weird day. Um, but, I, but I, this is the kind of the point I'm trying to make. Getting to the point we could do that was, was a hard and bloody journey. Um, there, there's, a, there's a reason why there's a lot of jokes going about me wielding a chainsaw. Um, I, I made plenty of enemies in the process. And, you know, okay, that's kind of a hobby of mine anyway, so it's not really a problem. Um, so did the uh, now-retired appear on... Um, but, you know, we got to the point where we can now turn it into something more civilised. Um, so, I'm, I'm, I'm here to say that um, the days of the warrior are over, and let's bring on the days of the responsible adult. <laughs> Which would be why... I'm, other than, other than um, a couple of the channels that I was running long before I made an OPA, I became an OPA. I've, I've, I've currently stepped back because I'm neither of those things. Um, my, 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 pla my plan is to have the um, being the bad guy and running the kindergarten role stay with other people forevermore. Um, and I, I'm, I'm going to stick to server herding because, you know, you, you can swear at servers as much as you like and they don't get upset about it. 
Um, so, Gina Hack, Gary and Ether are now basically um, running the show um, in terms of that. And this is great because pretty much we have... Um, Gina Hack is aware of the um, social justice crazy people but actually has reasonable views about it. Ether um, is not only our, to our, not only our token female but... Funnily enough, the most suspicious of the social justice movement, um, which, is a, which is an intentional plan because generally the people who are idiots on that side of it go, you can't speak about this because you're a man, at which point Ether goes, hi, you're still wrong. <laughs> uh, and then Garu as a, bal as a balancer because Garu is just such a nice and gentle person. And man, is it funny watching him come face to face with some of the trolls I've been dealing with for years. So yeah, um, n n all of them are at Yap CNA. None of them are here because they suck. But um, thank you to all of them. I look forward to watching their spirits break as they realize just how much fun it isn't moderating this stuff. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, um, we are now 10 minutes past time. And the next chunk of slides, frankly, is kind of boring. So what I'm going to do is completely fail to work my own slide system. Uh, screw this. Right. Because um, what, I, what I was going to talk about was basically how to deal with various forms of troublesome people. Um, but basically, the answer is, it's Perl. There's more than one way to do it. Open source is made of people, and that's both the best thing and the worst thing. And you know what? This community is full of crazy people, but most of us, I reckon, are kind of an awesome sort of crazy. And you know what? Just by turning up here, you're already on, you're already on the journey to, be, to being, you know, more of a... People talk about, what does it mean to be part of the Pearl community? And the answer is, honestly, it can mean whatever you want it to mean. Because, you know, there's more than one way to do it applies to everything. If you want to hang out on IRC, do. If you've never tried it, please do. Um, if you're going to upload stuff, great. If you're going to file bugs, great. If you're going to advocate for using Perl at work, um, even if it's for completely selfish reasons of liking Pearl and hating everybody else you work with, good. <laughs> and, you know, we are, we, 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 are, we are all humans here who love Pearl. And so this is my annual reminder. Welcome to the ongoing future of the Pearl community. And remember, that's you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.